In this video, we will discuss about velocity triangle diagram for impeller of centrifugal pump. And also we will see formula of work done, efficiencies and various angles of inlet and outlet velocity triangles. So first of all, we will see the construction and working of centrifugal pump. The centrifugal pump consists of impeller, casing, suction pipe with strainer and footwall and delivery pipe. The impeller is rotor having series of backward curved blades. The impeller is mounted on shaft which is usually coupled to motor. The motor provides required input energy to rotate the impeller. Impeller is enclosed in watertight casing with delivery pipe on one side and with arrangement on suction side which is called as eye of impeller. The pipe which connects sump to eye of impeller it is called as suction pipe and the delivery pipe connects outlet of pump up to point it delivers the liquid to required height. During the working, impeller is rotated with the help of motor. The speed of impeller should be sufficient to produce the centrifugal head such that it can initiate discharge from delivery pipe due to its high pressure. Thus liquid is continuously sucked from sump to impeller eye and it is delivered from casing of pump through delivery pipe. Here pump is power absorbing device in which work is done by impeller on water. In pump, water enters impeller at its center and leaves at its outer periphery. Hence, inlet and outlet velocity triangle can be drawn as drawn for inward flow reaction turbine. Here liquid enters the impeller vane radially that is guide blade angle at inlet that is angle alpha will be 90 degree. Therefore, absolute velocity of fluid indicated as V1 equals to velocity of flow Vf1 and here V1 itself acts as vertical component therefore horizontal part Vw1 will be 0. Now next is tangential velocity at inlet or also known as velocity of blade at inlet denoted as U1 which can be written as pi d1n by 60. Similarly tangential velocity at outlet or also known as velocity of blade at outlet denoted as U2 which can be written as pi d2n by 60 where d1 and d2 are the diameters of impeller at inlet and outlet respectively and capital N is the rotational speed of impeller in rpm. Now next is relative velocity of fluid at inlet that is vr1. So here relative velocity means the velocity of jet with respect to velocity of blade and here velocity of jet is v1 and velocity of blade is u1 and the angle of relative velocity line with the line of velocity of blade is known as angle theta. So here we complete the inlet velocity triangle for impeller. Next we draw outlet velocity triangle. Now at the outlet, the fluid is coming out at an angle beta with absolute velocity v2 with the direction of motion of blade. So this v2 is divided into two parts that is one is horizontal and other is vertical. So first we draw horizontal part vw2 and vw2 means velocity of reel at outlet and another is vertical part. The vertical part of this V2 is known as Vf2 that is velocity of flow at outlet. Now next is relative velocity of fluid at outlet that is Vr2. So here we draw inclined line of Vr2 with angle phi and this angle is known as blade angle at exit. Now we connect this point with the end of V2 line so we get the line U2 which indicates velocity of blade at outlet. So here we complete the outlet velocity triangle for impeller. Next we will find out equation of work done of centrifugal pump. So we can write work done by impeller per unit weight of water equals to. In case of turbine, we write work done equation with positive sign because turbine is produce the power. But in case of pump, we are supplying the power. That's why we are putting the negative sign here. And as we have discussed, in velocity triangle, the velocity of fluid at inlet is in vertical line that is alpha is 90 degree. And since entry of fluid is radial, hence Pw1 is 0. Therefore, the formula of work done will be like this. In case the working liquid is water and the weight of water is W, then work done on water per second becomes weight of water W multiplied with Vw2 into U2 divided by small g. 
where weight of water per second equal to rho g q. So I substitute this value and work done per second can be written as rho q v w two into u two, where discharge capital Q is the multiplication of area of flow that is pi d one b one and velocity of flow v f one, or q equal to pi d two b two multiply with velocity of flow v f two, where b one and b two are the width of impeller at inlet and outlet respectively. Now we we'll discuss equations of various angles made by velocities of inlet and outlet velocity triangle. Firstly, to determine blade angle at inlet, that is theta, I will use trigonometric ratio of tan theta, which is equal to opposite side v f one divided by adjacent side u one. To determine blade angle at outlet, that is phi, I will use trigonometric ratio of tan phi, which is equal to Opposite side VF two divided by adjacent side U two minus V W two. Now at the outlet, the fluid is coming out at an angle beta with absolute velocity V two with the direction of motion of blade. To determine, I will use trigonometric ratio of tan beta, which is equal to opposite side VF two divided by adjacent side V W two. Now we will discuss various heads connected with centrifugal pump installation. And also, we will discuss efficiencies of centrifugal pump. So here, figure shows various heads in pumping installation, where suction lift (HS) represents vertical distance between top surface level of sump and center of impeller. The delivery lift (HD) represents vertical distance between center of impeller and discharge level in delivery tank. Static head (capital HS) is the sum of Suction lift HS and delivery lift HD. That means static head represents vertical distance between top surface level of sump to discharge level in delivery tank. Next is cross head, is the total head against which pump has to work. Means cross head is the sum of static head, velocity heads, and friction losses in suction and delivery pipe. Next is manometric head HM, which is defined as Minimum amount of head against which pump has to work to deliver the required discharge means manometric head is the sum of static head, velocity head at discharge, and friction losses. Here, friction head loss in delivery pipe, that is HFD, is given by formula that is 4 FLV square upon 2 GD, where F is friction factor, L is the length of pipe, V is velocity of flow in pipe, capital D is diameter of pipe. And small g is acceleration due to gravity, but it should be noted that manometric head does not include friction loss head in impeller and casing of pump, and usually the velocity head at discharge is small compared to static head and friction head. Therefore, this head is mostly neglected. The relation between manometric head and work done by impeller on liquid is given by equation that is manometric head H M equal to Work done by impeller on water, that is V W two into U two divided by small g, minus loss of head in impeller and casing. And virtual head represents the total head through liquid can be lifted when all friction losses in pipes, impeller, and casing are neglected. Therefore, the equation becomes virtual head equal to V W two into U two divided by small g. Now we will discuss. Various efficiencies of centrifugal pump. First is mechanical efficiency, which is the ratio of power available at impeller to the power input at shaft, where power available at impeller is given by this formula, where small q is the leakage loss. The value of mechanical efficiency is ranges from 95% to 98%. Next is manometric efficiency, which is the ratio of manometric head developed by pump. To the head imparted by impeller to liquid, and mathematically it can be written by this formula. Next is volumetric efficiency, which is the ratio of actual liquid discharge from pump in meter cube per second to the theoretical liquid flow through impeller in meter cube per second, where small q represents the loss of discharge due to leakage loss. Next is overall efficiency, which is the ratio of power output of pump. Called as water power 
to the power input at shaft and also we can return overall efficiency as the multiplication of manometric efficiency volumetric efficiency and mechanical efficiency the next term is specific speed of centrifugal pump and the formula is specific speed ns equal to rotational speed of impeller capital n multiply with under root of capital q that is discharge rate and whole term divided by manometric head hm raised to 3 by 4 